In this video, we will take d fructose from the Fisher projection on the left to the Hayworth projection on the right. Um, in this case, because fructose is a ketone, um, the first carbon is not, the carbonyl carbon is not carbon one, but we still start numbering closest to the carbonyl carbon. So in this case, carbon will be two. Um, and on the right hand side in the Fisher projection, we start numbering on the right hand side but the corner carbon cannot be carbon one because there is another carbon directly attached to it so the carbon on the bottom will be carbon one the corner carbon will be carbon two and then we continue down the chain until all of the carbons are numbered so in this case we want to make a five-membered ring and carbon two over here comes from that carbonyl carbon um, so if you were to look at the oxygen that is embedded in the ring in order to turn that into a five-membered ring we need the oxygen that is attached to carbon five that is going to have to attach to that carbonyl carbon in order to close the ring structure so we'll start by taking this structure and rotating it 90 degrees clockwise So first step, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. And it helps to highlight the groups that are facing the left because everything that is on the left is going to turn over and face up. Um, so everything that is currently horizontal will become vertical and everything that is vertical will become horizontal. Okay, the CH2OH group that is currently up top is going to face the right hand side when we flip the structure over and all of the groups that are currently facing the left hand side are now going to be facing up so that means that on carbon three we have an OH group facing up on carbon four we have a hydrogen up and on carbon five we have a hydrogen facing up and the CH2OH group at the very end is going to be on the left-hand side of the molecule. Alrighty, um, when this structure was flipped on its side, that means that all of the groups that are currently on the right-hand side are going to be facing down. So on carbon three, we have a hydrogen facing down. On carbons four and five, we have OH groups. So very similar process to as converting glucose into the Hayworth projection. The difference will be in the glucose structure, we held carbons two and three static and then folded in the rest. On fructose, we're going to hold carbons, the carbon three and four bond constant and then fold in everything else. So here we hold the C3, C4 bond and fold in the rest of the structure. So I'm going to start by just copying the C4, C3 bond exactly the way that it currently is. So here's my carbon three, carbon four. And then on carbon three, we had an OH group facing up. On carbon four, we have a hydrogen facing up. Those orientations don't change, um, so that's just going to get copied exactly the way that it is. We haven't rotated anything, we're just holding that bond constant. On carbon 3, we have a hydrogen facing down. On carbon 4, we have an OH group facing down. Now that we have that, um, everything to the right of carbon 3, we're going to fold in. Um, so that C2, C3 bond gets folded in at an angle. So I'm going to draw it in at an angle like this and then put in the ketone and the CH2OH group that it is attached to. And same thing on the C4-C5 bond. That is going to get folded in at an angle. And as we're folding that in, the orientation of the groups doesn't change. So that hydrogen group that is facing up is still going to be facing up. 
and the OH group that is facing down is still going to be facing down. So we haven't rotated anything, it just got folded in. Okay. Now on carbon six with that CH2OH group, that is going to get folded behind the structure. So we're going to fold it in over here and there is our CH2OH group. Alrighty. Um, so here is where we have a minor problem. Um, because if we wanted to use the oxygen that is attached to carbon-6 to make a bond to the carbonyl carbon, if we count the atoms that would be within the ring, we would have one, two, three, four, five, and six atoms. That would make a six-membered ring. But we see that when we when fructose is in the Hayworth projection, we have a five-membered ring. We have one, two, three, four, five atoms within that ring-like structure. So this oxygen is not the one that actually connects to the carbonyl carbon. It is the oxygen that is connected to carbon-5. Um, so that means that we're going to have to do a bond rotation in order to be able to place that OH group to actually be able to reach the carbonyl carbon. Because right now it's way too far. That is not going to be able to form a bond. So we'll copy the structure over and do a bond rotation in order to be able to make that happen. Okay, so in order to close that ring, this OH group has to be close to the carbonyl carbon. So for that to happen, we can rotate that OH group up where CH2OH currently is. But if that happens, CH2OH has to move and the hydrogen has to move. So they are all going to rotate counterclockwise in order to place that OH group where we need it to be. So let's actually do that. Okay, so if the OH group comes up, it will be in this place. CH2OH then gets pushed up, and I'll just write it backwards so that it's not interfering with the rest of the ring, and the hydrogen group will now be facing down. So everything got moved counterclockwise. And now that we did that, we see that the OH group is much closer to that carbonyl carbon. Now it will be able to actually reach the carbonyl and close that ring structure. So to close it in, all we're going to do is redraw this in the five-membered ring format and connect that oxygen directly to the carbonyl carbon. And all of the other groups get copied exactly the way that they currently are. And I can't draw this straight line. Okay, so that oxygen is now connected to the carbonyl carbon. And when that happens, which way the carbonyl oxygen will be facing really depends on which direction the OH group approaches from. So if the OH group approaches from the top, then that oxygen gets pushed down and the OH group will be facing down. And that means that the CH2OH will be facing up. Everything else stays exactly the way that it is in the structure up top. So the groups that were facing up are still facing up. The groups that were facing down are still facing down. Um, the other difference that occurs is in the numbering. Um, so we saw in the glucose Fisher to Hayworth projection that the anomeric carbon was carbon one. In this case, all of the chemistry is happening on carbon two. So carbon two here is the anomeric carbon. That is where the ring opens and closes. And everything else gets numbered just continuously down the chain until we run out of carbons. So on carbon two, the ring is constantly opening and closing. Um, and if it closes with the OH group approaching from the top, then the oxygen gets pushed down. 
if that opens back up and then the oxygen changes trajectory, so in this case, if the OH group were to approach from the bottom, then that, let's maybe rotate that bond around so it's a little more apparent. So this is a single bond that can rotate and it can rotate this way. In which case, the OH group, if it were to approach from the bottom, then that oxygen gets pushed up, and the OH group that results from the ring closing will be facing up. So carbon 2 here is our anomeric carbon, and whether this is alpha or beta glucose, sorry, fructose, is dependent on which way this OH group is facing from the perspective of the anomeric carbon. So in the structure on the left, the OH group is facing up, so this would be beta defructose. On the structure on the right, the OH group is facing down, so this would be alpha defructose.